Hello, so does driving anxiety just go away on its own? If you've got driving anxiety or a fear or phobia of driving, what's going to happen if you leave it? Does it just go away? Does it get better or does it get worse? Well, in this video, I'm going to give you the answer to those questions and more. Now, if you take a look on the screen, you'll see I'm actually showing you a preview of something that people get to see when they book a consultation call with me. So I work with people all over the world to help them overcome their fear of driving. And when I talk to them online on a video call, we do go through a short slideshow presentation. And this is the first time I've ever shared one of the slides with you in public. So most of the slides are positive and informative and tell you about how this works and how you're gonna get better but unfortunately this one is a bit of a negative slide, but let's have a look at it. So as you can see at the top of the screen, it says the cost of your problem. The longer you do something for, the better you get at it. That means you'll get better at having a problem the longer you keep it. So this is something quite funny that people often don't realize. The longer you do something for, the better you get at it. So if you do a job for a long time, you generally get much better at that job. If you have a problem for a long time, you actually become better at having the problem. Now, I do want to point out that this does not apply to everyone, okay? I'm not saying that the things you're about to see will happen for everyone. This is what can happen to some people some of the time. But it's also important you understand that I'm basing this on 20 years of experience of helping anxious drivers. This is not just me making this up or trying to scare you. This is based on over a thousand people that I've worked with in the last 20 years. And that's a thousand people in the car, not all at the same time, but a thousand drivers in my car over the course of 20 years. And having worked with people around the world online, I've worked with people in Australia, America, Poland, all over the world and this is based on what those people have said. So let's have a look at how driving anxiety works, how it makes you feel, and some of you watching this will be nodding along in a moment, thinking, yeah, that's me. So here we go with the first part of the slide. If you look on the left there, this is what currently happens. So when people come to me with driving anxiety, they often report feeling trapped, relying on other people for lifts, avoiding motorways or bridges, they can't get to work, they can't take the kids out, they're having to rely on public transport and all the other problems that link with not being able to drive. So can you think of anything else that isn't on there? A common one is having arguments with your partner. That's a really, really common one. So that's probably where you are now. So I won't talk about that for long because you know what the situation is like. A lot of people say they feel trapped they can't go where they want to go and they feel like they're letting the kids down because they want to take the kids out and they can't. Not being able to get to work is a big problem and many people who have come to me have risked not being able to continue in their job or not being able to further their career if they can't drive. So let's have a look at what can happen in the next year. So once you've started to experience those symptoms, because remember they are symptoms, that isn't really the problem. Your driving problem has nothing to do with driving, but those are the symptoms that you're experiencing. I'm going to now show you the next part of the slide. What can happen in the next year? So in the next year, if your mind thinks you're not listening to it, then it can make the problem worse to make you listen. The problem can grow to include making you feel bad on highways, bridges, main roads, small roads, and eventually all roads. It's common to feel that the area you can drive in is shrinking as time passes. It can get to the point where you stop driving, which can cause problems in your work and social life. So this is not meant to scare you. This is what you need to know. People often have this thing about, I've got anxiety and I hope it'll just go away. Let me tell you something. It won't just go away on its own. Now I know there'll be people who say, well, I had it and he went. I don't want to worry you, but it hasn't actually gone. You'll see in a moment what's happened to it. But if you've had driving anxiety and you think it's just gone, if you're lucky, maybe it has. 
But for many people, what happens is what's going to come next in this next part of the slide, where it says a few years from now. So let's look at what can happen if you don't take action to get rid of your problem now. So the problem can grow and can mutate, making it harder to find and fix than it is now. And this is the point I was talking about just. Some people who think that they've got rid of driving anxiety have actually just changed it to another problem and they haven't noticed yet. So it can be, as it says here, it can spread to other things like a fear of flying, trains or any travel. And this is one of the, the massive ones for a lot of people that come to me for help. Children you have now or in the future can pick up on this and they often end up with the same problem. Just look at how many kids end up smoking because their parents smoke. How many kids end up not driving because their parents didn't drive. Many people I've helped to overcome this problem have said that they don't want the children picking up on it. So what do you think can happen to a child if they're seeing their dad drive all the time? If it's always the father driving, that can actually give the child a message subconsciously that only men can drive and that women can't drive. Now that is of course a load of rubbish because I've taught hundreds of women and I've worked with many women to help them overcome their fear of driving. But when a child is up to about the age of seven, they don't have what we call a critical faculty, which is something I'll talk about in other videos. But a critical faculty is simply like a filter. And if I give you an example now, don't look behind you, but did you know that behind you there is an enormous hedgehog and this hedgehog is 50 feet tall and it's bright pink and it's waving a sign saying hello. Now what makes you think that isn't true? Because of course hopefully you do think that isn't true. <laughs> it's your critical faculty. You see the message goes in, you analyse it and think that's rubbish, nope, chuck it out, doesn't work. You see children up to the age of about seven don't have a critical faculty. That's why you can tell them anything and they'll believe anything, which is why you have to be very careful with how you bring your children up. If someone tells them something, they'll believe it to be true because they don't yet have their critical faculty. And with the work that I do, when I help people go into hypnosis, what we do is we temporarily pause that critical faculty and it allows you to go into hypnosis easily and make all the changes you want because you're no longer being hampered by this filter. If you want to learn more about that, I'll link to a page on my website where you can read all about the critical faculty and how it works. If you don't care about any of that stuff, never mind. You don't have to understand hypnosis to use it, just in the same way you can drive a car without knowing how the engine works. So I hope that's helped you to see that if you don't get rid of your problem now, it does unfortunately often just get worse. Yes, it can go, but has it gone or has it just mutated into something else? Is it that you had a fear of driving and now without noticing it, you've maybe started eating more or smoking or you might have a fear of flying you don't know about? If you want to ask any questions about this, please just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Or you can contact me through my website. You can book a free call with me and we can go over more of this and I can show you the rest of the slideshow. If you'd like to see more videos like this where I'll go through some more slides and tell you some facts and things about driving anxiety and phobia in general, let me know and I'll make them. Check out these other videos on the screen now for more help with your fear of driving. Thanks for watching and as always, I'll see you again soon for more videos.